morning, booktube. Or good night, good afternoon. Whatever time it is, I'm gonna be uploading this. Or whatever time you're gonna be watching this. Um, I'm filming this at around 7 in the morning. I just had my coffee. And started reading Linnea Sinclair's Gabriel's Ghost. And before I knew it, I was already done 26 pages in. And wow, that was some fast-paced world building right there. Indeed, it's an award winner for Best Paranormal Romance. That I can say as early as now. Wow. It got a really solid start. Um, we got really strong characters right off the bat. Didn't waste any moment establishing the uh, the world and their identities and their personalities and their bickering and tension. Phenomenal. I am blown away and it's only 26 pages. It's like a marriage of two tropes that I really love. Um, it's like their exes reuniting and enemies turn to lovers at the same time, if that makes sense. We have Chasida, our female lead character, and Gabriel Sullivan, the titular uh, male lead character. The chemistry? Wow. It's like intergalactic Tom and Jerry. Uh, or if you've seen the movie Catch Me If You Can, but make it romantic. I think that's the closest thing I could ever think of. I'm so excited for the rest of this book. Wow. Wow. So, I'm stuck here at a sketchy parking lot of a sketchy mall somewhere in the metro. I'm on page 89 of Gabriel's Ghost and Ladies and gentlemen, the brand of storytelling has remained consistent and there's just something so special about that when a story just continues to preserve its strength. It just remains to be so compelling and so fun. The characters and their relationship dynamics continue to be so multidimensional and mysterious and Everyone is just so well written and likable. Um, the bickering and the tension between our main OTP remains to be fiery. Although there is a character that is potentially becoming a threat to make this a love triangle, but you know what? It's been done and executed so well that I really wouldn't mind, even though I hate love triangles, but. Really, I wouldn't mind if it really takes that path uh, somewhere in between. It just makes so much sense um, why it has become such an excellent and an award winner at that um, for paranormal romance because it does paranormal and it does romance so excellently balanced if i can put it like that it does the two factors so brilliantly it's intergalactic world systems but even though it is very complex it never bored me at any point it remains to be fun and engaging and interesting which is not a lot of books can do because usually whenever the world system is being established there's always a potential to doze off and just let the uh, intricacies of the world to make a space out because it's trying to become more than what it is but in this case the book has really done such a good job um, presenting it to you in a way that it doesn't dumb down itself but at the same time um, it, it keeps you in tune if that makes sense because you know I like it 
when a book is smart but I like it when it doesn't try to blatantly outsmart me it just assumes that I will catch up with it but at the same time it wouldn't really pretend to be more than what it is if that makes sense it's just such a good read it's really fun and I want this just to go on forever <laughs> although of course I'm very interested to find out what happens next but yeah this book is just so special and I know it's a lot of pressure but I hope it doesn't let me down after all I'm just on page 89 so we know we don't know what's gonna happen but I have faith it's earned it morally gray characters but I love it even more when their moral grayness when uh, a morally gray part of their personality is being utilized as something that would create conflict or uh, impact or affect the relationship dynamic with other people I did say uh, towards the beginning of this book that one of the first things I fell in love with was how sexy and smart the bickering was between our main characters. I, I just love it how flirtatious their banter is. However, this is the first time that I've encountered um, an exchange or a conversation between them that's, that's a little bit off kilter. They are celebrating Pehar Week and one of the uh, rites or rituals that they do for that celebration was drinking honey lace which is like um like alcohol basically um chasida didn't drink much of it uh really just a sip um sullivan on the other hand drank goblet after goblet after goblet so understandably he's drunk um when the two of them walked out of the ceremony hall um they went to Sullivan's quarters and they kissed. Shasida, analyzing the situation, pushed Sullivan away and told him, You're drunk. I'm confused. Maybe this is not the right thing to do at this time. And Sullivan replied to that by telling her, Maybe I like my women confused. Yeah, I really said that. So, Chasida, Chasida is always quick on her feet, which always makes the banter so fun because she always has already come up. She's always quick on her feet um, with a rebuttal at whatever Sullivan's gonna throw at her. So, in this situation, right away, she tells him after he tells her. Maybe I like my women confused. Um, Chasida right away says, Maybe I don't like to be one of your confused women. And then she walks out of the room. Eventually, the following morning, there's this awkward uh, tension when they met again in the common room and with Sullivan apologizing to her about what has happened last night. He was drunk, blah, blah, blah. And Chasida was trying her best to appear passive and unaffected, a defense mechanism wall, of course. Um, but then internally, inside her mind, uh, she's reflecting and lamenting how she's hurt by how fickle and how uh, ambiguous or just not straightforward or honest Sullivan has been the funny thing to me is uh just moments after that um awkward encounter in the, uh in the morning after um she comes back to 
Ren's room. Um, and as her internal monologue goes from that lamentation straight to something like, um, I'd never seen him in a civilian garb before. His muscular form was even more striking in the tight-fitting shirt and straight pants. Another admittedly handsome male specimen. And I'm just like, girl, you were just lamenting a few seconds ago, and then now you're being hormonal over another guy specimen. Okay. But then Chasida would always end it with a disclaimer that Ren does not affect her in any way the way Sullivan does. That he's not attracted, she, she's not a, attracted to him whatsoever. And I'm just like, okay, girl. <laughs> you tell yourself that, okay? Okay, sure, we believe you. Sure. Am I gonna have a really bad case of second lead syndrome here? I don't know. I don't like second lead syndrome. Gabriel's ghosts continue to remain smart and sexy, right? I go from page to page just thinking, oh, this is so smart. Oh, this is so sexy. Oh, this is so sci-fi. Those are basically the emotions that I alternate from as I go from page to page. But then, but then... We reach the uh, exactly the 199 page mark, and I'm just I just feel like tearing up. It's so sad. No one died. Disclaimer: No one died. But this plot twist that just happened. And this exchange of words, this argument that took place is hurting my heart in such a good way, if you know what I mean. Wow. It's so heartbreaking. Dang, book. What are you doing to me? Wow. Wow. So, I've already finished um, Linnea Sinclair's Gabriel's Ghost. I'm kind of conflicted because what I've been thinking all along was how... You know how people rate books four stars? And... Really, what it means is that it's either, it's originally a three-star book that exceeded your expectations a little, that's why you're giving it four-star rating, or it could be something that you're predicting to be a five-star book, but kind of just fell short a little bit, that's why you're putting it down a notch to four stars. It's it's curious because I think I'm giving this four stars for both of these reasons. Both because this is quite a surprise. I didn't really expect that I would enjoy this book as much. But at the same time, uh, the first half of the book had me thinking 
I would end up giving it a five star rating because I really love this book. Don't get me wrong. I really love this book. Um, the writing is just brilliant all throughout. From beginning to end, it continues to amaze me how the writer can navigate between scientific and lyrical. On one page, I would feel like I'm reading through a rocket manual for NASA and then a few pages later, it would feel like I'm reading sensual poetry. Like, how does that work? How can she do both? So writing, I definitely have no problems with. Um, every time she she goes sentimental and every time she uh, talks about sad parts, um, it really breaks my heart effectively. So definitely there's no shortcoming when it comes to writing uh, for this book. Plot definitely is refreshing. I dare say that if this would get published, today and be marketed into uh, a more trendy, more sleek, stylish uh, cover, I think it could give the current fantasy novels a run for their money. That's how competitive the plot is. And I think this was published 2002. And we're now in 2021. And I think it's very competitive in that respect. I am impressed by the foresight uh, in terms of technology that I have witnessed in this book. Like, I am amazed that she was able to conjure uh, that kind of technological insights in this book. She got the romance covered and she got the sci-fi and paranormal covered. Nothing's lacking, right? Now, the characters. Um, I, I was very eager and excited because uh, I, I did say during the first few pages of this book that the characters are very likable and I still stand by that. I still like all of them. It's just that I have very minor issues with the, uh, the male lead which happens to be the title Gabriel Sullivan. By the way, um, did I develop a second lead syndrome with Ren? No, um, because it's great that the uh, the book didn't go the uh, the love triangle plot. That's amazing. Uh, it didn't go to the cliche route to have Ren be the second lead into a, a pathetic love triangle. I'm glad. I'm thankful. I appreciate that. Cassida, our girl, I like how her issues and her feelings are so valid, and she her thought and her uh, thinking process whenever something gets revealed to her is so on point. I like that because one thing that I have trouble with uh, female heroines is when they just mope uh, irrationally for things that I that are not really articulated well but this book does such a fine job um, explaining what Chasida is feeling towards uh, Gabriel Sullivan and I completely agree with her with all her worries all her fears I I totally can understand where she's coming from and I respect that my issue with Gabriel though um, you know I think this is where my problem is with um, why I struggle with uh, superpower, a supernatural shonen anime. Um, I love OP characters. Okay, um, I love it when the the character is so undefeatable. Um, I like it when they always have the upper hand against their rivals. I love it. I love being OP. Um, I love. One Punch Man, I love Mob Psycho 100, I love Code Geass, what else? Uh, Daily Life of Immortal King, I love those animes. Uh, Seven Deadly Sins, 
there are lots of those um, OP characters. What what makes them so attractive to me is because their being OP is established at the onset of the plot. All right, right at the beginning, the story is so straightforward to me and tells me that a character is OP. Gabriel's ghost, uh, we only learn of her supernatural skills halfway through the book, which became the revelation and the turning point in their relationship, uh, Gabriel and Chasida, because uh, Gabriel has mind talents, as they call it, which humans originally don't have, okay? He shouldn't have that, but he does. I would have accepted that if it stopped there. But from that point forward, every several chapters later, we learn of a new skill that Gabriel has that he's hiding from Chasida. So <sighs> that's when being an OP kind of feels like a last minute addition to me something like an afterthought because it only comes out whenever they're in a life-threatening situation it, it it makes me struggle to accept the uh, life and death stakes because Gabriel always has a new power that he can utilize to get them out of that situation you understand how I feel it's very different if that has been established at the first few chapters because in that way, the story would have to resort to a different conflict other than that. Do you get what I mean? I would probably give, give this a five stars if that was revealed to me early on, not in the latter chapters. The book still tried to redeem itself by making that uh, trait not the glorified uh, chosen one trope, but rather uh, that was um, those powers or those skills were actually something that is uh, abhorred or hated by the empire. So it's actually not allowed. I would have just really appreciated more if uh, those skills were introduced to me early on to the story or if it stopped at just one power. I think I would have preferred that to keep it simple because the thing with sci-fi and I think with fantasy, that's why I don't really gravitate towards this genre so much is because I'm a sucker for stru structure, okay, for system. If you give me a box, all right, if you give me a set of rules, I expect you to stay within that box. If you're gonna play around a plot, do it without going outside of the box because if you go outside the box and break your own rules then how am I gonna trust you? Nevertheless, it's still a really fascinating read. Um, I wouldn't mind rereading this and like I said, uh, the plot is very strong. The writing is competitive and like I said, even in the year 2021, I think this is a really decent uh, sci-fi novel. So, you know, yeah, best paranormal romance, sure, definitely, I agree. Uh, I I I think I bought this as part of a bundle package, um, a romance bundle package, um, four bucks for 150 pesos, and you know what? I look it up uh, if it's still available uh, online if uh, people can still purchase it and I think this is uh, available via book depository and you know how much this is it's 600 pesos at this time so if I do the math right uh, I think I got it for the price of 35 pesos so really what a steal right and that alone makes this such an enriching experience that's the beauty of um, ordering and buying books that you normally wouldn't have ordered by yourself because it helps broaden your horizons and I think that's what I achieved here um, 
this is uh, again uh, a genre I'm not really comfortable reading but I ended up enjoying it so yeah uh, definitely if you could have the chance give this one a try really good sci-fi romance definitely recommend it see you on my next video